hello and welcome. Welcome to International Engineering Fantastic Dancer, wonderful artist, internationally acclaimed. He will guide us through Shostakovich previews. This is a really special project for us. And um, I will mention that I have heard Ignat Polzhenitsyn play Shostakovich, and it's one of the most memorable performances of Shostakovich's music that I still remember still vividly. So I'm sure we will learn a lot. And thank you, Ignat, for being here with us. Well, um, we came in an order of the program, and uh, for you viewers, I put the program in the chat. When you come up, please announce, just um, introduce yourself, see your name and the previous number. When you finish playing, you have cleaning supplies if you could quickly wipe the keyboard afterwards. We will move quickly through all 17 previews. I'm Aram, and I'll be playing the uh, second prelude in A minor. Thank you so much. Uh, Ar how do you say Aram? Aram. Uh, uh, very nice performance. Very good and musical playing. Um, can you hear me okay as I'm making my comments here? Uh, I just want to make sure you can hear me. Yeah, okay. I think because you're uh, the piano sounds good, and then whoever's speaking, if you can speak up, uh, because it's with the masks especially, it's it sounds quiet. So, okay, uh, very good. Aram, I would just say that even more in the direction that you're going with this piece, meaning more flair, more rhythmic, uh, rhythmic freedom, uh, more of that kind of Spanish feel that this, all of these preludes have have such clearly defined characters. And uh, I think you're on your way to do it, but I'd love to hear a little more from you, uh, more in terms of the rhythm, more in terms of uh, uh, biting articulation and uh, uh, just more of that character to come through. Maybe you could start again and just play a few bars. Yeah, I think it's, it's a, well, let, okay, let's start at the beginning. Um, I'm wondering about the pedaling. 
because your your articulation is actually it's actually very clear, but uh, I wonder if you can attempt uh, the printed pedaling, uh, which uh, is obviously not easy to do, but half half pedal. It sounds to me admittedly difficult to tell over Zoom that, for example, in the second bar, you're simply playing, you're not pedaling or you're changing the pedal completely. Could you try a half pedal, a quarter pedal, where we still get a, a, this atmosphere, a little bit of a impressionistic quality, even though it's staccato. And then the, the so let's try that first. That's the idea. That's that's the idea. So that it's not completely clean. We don't want it muddy, but we want. But obviously, he's writing this pedaling for a reason. And then, of course, in the first bar, it's easier because it's the same harmony. Then, when the right hand comes in, I feel that your right hand is a little late. It's actually, it's actually sitting on your knee until the last possible moment. And I think it would it would help you if you have it ready. Uh, let me try, um, and, and then you can see my hands. And maybe I'm ready a little earlier. And then when I do come in perhaps more, more of an impetuous gesture. So this impetuous. Yours is a bit polite, I think, for the character that is needed. Too polite. Okay, so let, one more time, just to just to get a flavor feel for how that can go. Good, very good, Aram. I like very much what you're doing with the pedal. Uh, as far as I can hear, it's just, it's somewhere in between. It's not clean. It shouldn't be clean and it shouldn't be muddy, but it should be just, just in between. I think you're getting that. In that first right hand gesture, it's quite a big crescendo, isn't it? From piano to mezzo forte. Uh, it's better what you did now, but still I feel it's a bit shy. A little more well, shall we say ostentatious, a little more, maybe even vulgar, right? So much of these of this music is a kind of a parody, right? A kind of a, a mocking, um, at least on the surface. And so, so again, maybe maybe a bigger crescendo. And what if you try just one last time, and then 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 we have to go on. But maybe one last time and play these first few bars even more freely, especially in the right hand even more freely and and uh with rhythmically you know so that so that it's not uh, not not too strict it can be very much as the spirit moves you especially if the left hand can sit, stay more or less in time okay so just please try it again Good. That's to, to me. That's that's the idea. Um, that's the direction that I would wish you to to go in the next couple of weeks that you have that you may still have to work in the piece, just so that kind of the colors are brighter, uh, almost to the point of being, as I said, almost 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 too much. Good. Well done. Thank you so much, Aram. And I think we'll see you shortly, eventually for another prelude. I saw your name on the list for for another one. So. Very good.
thank you, Yi, very much. Uh, it's a, a, another beautiful performance. I, I, I like the way you're handling it. Uh, you play with poise, good concentration, uh, a good overall arc for this piece. So very good. Um, I do have a couple of suggestions. First of all, it feels for me a bit fast for an Anante. Now, I was thinking as you were playing, probably you're playing something very close to the author's metronome mark. Um, do you know what speed you play it at? I, would, I think I played it at around 85. 85. Okay, well, so that's extremely close to what Shostakovich marks. The problem that uh, we might as well talk about it now because it will it, it may come up uh, today and it's just something to realize with Shostakovich is that um, I don't claim to have, of course, the, the answers to this problem, but I'd like to define the problem. All of his fast tempi are virtually without exception too fast. When, of course, when I say that, I'm not saying he's wrong. The composer is never wrong. But Shostakovich was, was, he did not like the metronome. He was forced by the publishers and just by the kind of musical uh, environs to, the, you know, a piece, proper music has to have metronome marks. So he was forced to put them in. It would usually be after composition and just before publishing. And uh, uh, we know that uh, I met, Slava Rostropovich told me many times that he, he didn't like the metronome, and, and if Slava asked him, what speed should I play this at? He would, uh, he would just almost randomly pick a number and say, that's the number. So he did not seem to have given it me quite the same thought that, that some, some other composers. Uh, he was also a very nervous man, uh, very shy, and whenever he would play, he would rush like crazy, like we all know not to do. So it just creates a problem that so many of his fast movements are unplayable at the, at the speed that, they're, that he's asking us to play, whether piano pieces, string quartets, symphonies, and so on. So then we come to the slower pieces where, like this one, certainly can be played in, in his tempo, which, again, you seem to have done that. And, of course, really good for you because you're playing what's... But in a bigger picture, knowing maybe this problem uh, with, with, with Shostakovich markings, we have to ask ourself, ourselves, is this really andante? You know, the composer could be wrong about metronome, wrong in the sense of could be inaccurate or sloppy. The composer, of course, by definition, cannot be wrong about the tempo marking. The tempo word, I think, is, is the proper term. The tempo word, uh, in this case, andante. In other words, he knows what kind of piece he has written. Is it Andante? And your version, even if truthful to the metronome, sounds a bit like an allegretto for me. So I would just suggest that you consider a little bit, little bit something that feels maybe more like an Andante. Something like that. Okay. Not to say I, it has to be that tempo, and that's just a suggestion. But maybe if you don't mind, just to try it right now. And the other thing, after that lengthy prelude, I'd like to suggest one more thing: that immediately from the beginning, you really give a beautiful singing tone to the top voice, even more than you did, and less for the accompaniment. So we really have a clear solo and a. Comp a, a accompagnando texture. Could you could you try that? Okay, wonderful. To me, that's that's very promising. Um, and again, nothing wrong with the way you played in the beginning. And in fact, it was beautiful. But let's look for something that you know. If you if you play it for a colleague who who's not a pianist who doesn't know the piece, say what what tempo do you think this is? They should be able to say that sounds like an andante. 
And, uh, you know, so in, in a way, that's the test more so than exactly what the what your marking, you know, may end up being. I have a couple of things for you at the end, Yi, uh, that are, really need to be mentioned. Uh, a couple of details uh, before we, we go on. Um, I hope you have bar numbers. Um, if you look at bar 25, uh, what is the big musical event, would you say, that happens at the beginning of bar 25? Right, the sudden pianissimo, subito pianissimo. I feel like you did it, but without full conviction. Uh, it also may have been the pedal change might have been too late, but you sort of did it, but it didn't really get the feeling. We need something like this. So that moment really needs to be special and maybe delayed just a touch to make sure you can get a, a pianissimo. Would you try those two bars? Yeah. Much better, much better. Thank you. Thank you for correct. Of course, I played the wrong harmony, so you fix that too. That's good. Now, two bars later, uh, very good subito forte. In other words, sudden. Everybody knows that term, I hope. Subito meaning sudden. But uh, your rhythm in the left hand got out of whack. So whatever the tempo is, the rhythm needs to be, of course, completely steady here in this trumpet fanfare. So, and that bar and the next bar, in other words, 27 and 28, it seemed that you lost track of your pulse. You lost track of the rhythm. So could you start now, please, at 25 with that beautiful pianissimo you just created? And then 27 and 28, please don't tense up, don't panic, um, you know, that we all do from some of these more difficult places, and just keep good count, good strong pulse. So let's just hear those few bars, please. Yeah, um, he, it, it doesn't sound quite right to me. If we just stay in whatever tempo we're in, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Right, exactly. And somehow, especially bar 27 seems to get swallowed swallowed up or doesn't have enough beats or maybe you're just rushing so one more time let's just see if we can get that a little better before we say goodbye to the g major I would just say let's we we need to go on so that everybody has a chance to play but i would just say you're not counting bar 27 correctly you're you're, you're skipping the second beat you're basically skipping it so it's i would say that when you go back to the practice room put on the metronome at 85 or whatever your speed will be and and just make sure that this is absolutely accurate the military rhythm should be precise uh, very good job thank you and let's go on to the next one thank you
Thank you, Rui. Uh, you're brave enough to tackle this, uh, probably the nastiest, most difficult of the of these of this whole set. Uh, and I like your speed. Speaking of speed, you're not playing a 200. Um, frankly, I don't really want to hear it at 200. It's 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 virtually unplayable. Um, and if it is playable, it's it's kind of nonsensical. So I think your tempo is sounds about right to me. Um, obviously, it's still very demanding. I wonder if, uh, let me just mention a couple things. Before I forget, first of all, at the very end, I just wanted to check your notes um, in bar 17, 18, 19, 20. Can you play the left hand? Left hand. B flat, not D flat. Right. Very good. And then what I really liked about your left hand was phrasing. You were making music with it. For example, you played, you, you know, good phrasing as opposed to just playing everything vertically. Very good. However, can you keep that phrasing, but also get more bite, more bite in the, in each, really each one of them, especially the ones that have sforzando, of course, but of course, each note has a dot and an accent. So it's a question of uh, ripping out the note as quickly and almost violently as possible from the keys. Let me try. fingers. Yeah, that's that I mean that's that that's the idea. But it's really diff it's difficult to play all of this uh, to, to to play this 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 uh virtuoso right hand and to stay focused on the left hand but the left hand is the one just like a chopin etude the left hand is the one that has the music by and large right the right hand in so many chopin etudes and bass line harmony and so forth here it's almost a melody it's a bass line but also a melody you could say using the left hand um, as far as the right hand is concerned um two things i would say make sure you have the best fingering i assume you have do, is everything fingered? Meaning, do you know exactly which finger you're using in every note? I assume. So that's good. So that's, first of all, you have to have a fingering that's set. Secondly, I would say at this stage, you're getting ready for performance, or in this case, recording. There's a couple of bars you're having trouble with. I would say if it's, if it's not working at this stage as well as you'd like, maybe, it's, maybe you need to revisit the fingering. Okay, maybe something isn't is causing too much trouble. Maybe there's another way to do it. Uh, most of this, it's already so uncomfortable with the thumbs and the black keys and things like that. That um, you know, it, you might as well experiment and see if there's a slightly less awkward way uh, to 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 deal with a certain bar. So that's one thing. And then the other point about the right hand is look at the first bar. He gives us one very important clue how to play this, which is legato. Legato. And the, what would be the alternative? The alternative in a virtuoso etude, of course, would be would be leggero. Would be leggero, where we where we play with extremely high fingers and uh, really sp really sparkling, really bright. And I would say so. This kind of thing. <laughs> And so forth, whatever that is, really, really, really bright. And I would say clearly he doesn't want that here. Yes, it's a virtuoso piece. Yes, it's an A2 type, but he says legato. So that means playing a little bit more in the key, 
that also affects tempo, in my opinion. We already talked about that. A little more in the key and, and, and well, a little bit more of a line, even though we have all these crazy pirouettes. Uh, so, so maybe just, and maybe not as loud, you know, because of course the deeper we play in the key, then the heavier things get. So maybe try just a little, a little softer, the right hand, but a good legato and try to avoid going up and down with the wrist. Smoother. Yeah, so good. So I think that's where I'd like to leave it for you to think about that the right hand is a little smoother but and then the left hand is more by I still feel when you're playing now the left hand is a little little too polite and it's a little too sluggish do you know that word to you know a little slow I mean you're you're at you're playing at the correct time but it's a little bit I'm hearing maybe it's too much arm we just want Quick fingers and, and a little wrist. Quicker, quicker attack. Right hand smooth, left hand really sharp, really quick. One last time, just a couple bars. Good. Good. That's that's very much that's very much the idea. So good luck. Again, you have you are courageous to take this one on. Keep practicing. Keep working. Don't be afraid to change a fingering still here or there. And best luck with this one. Well done. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's another good performance, uh, obviously by remote. Um, we, not exactly sure since uh, since Ted, I know Ted. Uh, not, I will give a maybe demonstrate one or two things, and uh, and I hope that that will be helpful even in this kind of double remote remote way. Uh, <laughs> I would say that it's a bit quick in my view for an allegretto. I will trust the allegretto more than I would trust the specific number. That makes sense. So it's a it's this uh, ridiculous that has to have uh, has to have an obnoxious quality and a and a very and a vulgar quality uh, and to me a little too 
uh, you know the expression straight, too straight. It's it's yeah. a bit too straight, and I would say <laughs> it's a bit too fast, and and it needs more, more verve. Uh, maybe I'll try to see. perhaps doesn't have to be as marcato. So perhaps here I'm thinking could be just a little more almost a portato feel to give it a contrast. I'm not sure about that, of course. I don't I'm but he doesn't put any accents, he doesn't put any rests. It just or or in the line, it seems a little smoother to me. And it would give a little contrast articulation contrast to the ear that maybe he's getting tired. Okay. Um, then but you can do a better legato, I think. When he writes legato in the left hand. You know, a, 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 a trombone solo, right? It's big and clumsy, but it still can be beautiful legato. And I think you can do better there. And then, uh, just looking looking further afield, when we kind of get to the climax, the climactic moment, returning, returning to the to the beginning, but in a slower tempo. So moderato, moderato, and you'll notice it's a dotted quarter, not quarter note. So to me, that first moderato bar is much too fast. Much too fast. The next bar. So the second moderato bar, which is 51. Oh, by the way, you have wrong notes. Uh, it's a G natural. So in oh. the left hand, not G sharp. So oh, anyway, okay. <laughs> all of those, yeah, E sharp and G natural. But so the second moderato bar would be in the tempo of something like perhaps. just say but if that's our tempo one two one two then the first moderato bar needs to be a lot needs to sound a lot slower because it's a it's a longer beat right it's a three four bar so one two so to put that in context since you can't try it at the piano now let me just try uh from somewhere in, the, in 45 or so. And so forth. So, and, and what that's supposed to portray, of course, is a, um, a kind of an obnoxious and overdone rubato. Right when when the whole orchestra is, or the conductor takes you know a a, a a kind of a huge amount of time to show off, you know, kind of gaudy and really overdone, and that's to me is what this is. One. And so forth. So okay. th so that's uh, those are the main things where I think you can uh, get get uh, get get a better result. The tempo, of course, is a personal thing. And again, I, I, any time somebody reads this carefully and notices 116 in this case, and I can only admire that. But as for the reasons already stated, I think we have to focus on the Allegretto at least as much as in the metronome mark. Okay. Thank you so much. Well yeah, done. thank you. I'll, I'll definitely continue. Thank you very much.
thank you, Hannah. I, I can't help but notice your last name is Duke. So you've come to the right school, obviously. Um, listen, well done. Uh, I like your tempo. You're playing, I'm guessing, not 96, I would say, by, you know, you're playing quite a bit under. And to me, this feels like a, a good andante tempo. Not slower than you're playing, but somewhere in that neighborhood, or perhaps a little bit more moving. But I think you get the right, I, if, you know, I know that that's an andante by listening to you. I wonder if you can try, even right now in the class, uh, just just to see if there's a way to get a more compelling, a more uh, convincing legato. Right away, he says, with pedal, that's fine, but there's the long legato and a, there's the espressivo mark. Whenever Shostakovich or Brahms or Beethoven mark espressivo, you know, they're not fooling around. You know, it has to really connect. It has to really be personal. And I felt that maybe your legato is a little abstracted, a little bit, shall we say, objective, too objective. Could it be more personal? Could it be, could it connect more with me and with every, every listener? And uh, technically, one thing I noticed is as you're playing the left hand, I see, can you see my hand, my left hand? Okay, great. So I'm seeing a lot of kind of up and down, kind of bobbling. For example, I really noticed it in 21 and 22, where if I can exaggerate what I think you did, too much up and down, which would be fine for portato or for light staccato, depending, but of course for legato, we want to keep that, we want to keep that wrist and the bridge of the hand relatively smooth. Uh, the less up and down, the better. And I, and, I, and I know you know that, and I can see from your, not, from your nodding that you, you, of course you know that. So uh, would you try either that place or the beginning just to see about that more smooth, smooth and convincing legato. A legato you really, that will make you proud, will make you happy as a performer. Yes, 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 the more, the more intensity you put into it, uh, the, the more compelling it sounds. And that's what legato really is, right? You, we all know that from, from, from the earliest time of studying our uh, instrument, that we cannot really make legato on the piano. It's a percussion instrument. It's an illusion. And all of that is true. But precisely because it's an illusion, the power of legato and great legato comes from willpower, comes from willing it to come fruition, willing it to from you, from your heart and from your mind. So approach, I think, it will, will really, uh, so it's, you know, Rostrovich, you know, Rostrovich, whoever your favorite cellist, you know, Yo-Yo Ma, whoever, it's a beautiful line and you're leading it and you're making it so, so good. Um, I, I wonder, at the end, you could just balance voicing the last phrase, the last five bars. But I thought that the pacing was a bit relentless. Not a big, the huge majority of the pieces in general. I think it's so often overdone. Just, I don't know. I think in your case, Maybe it's underdone. I would say you've, you played almost exactly in tempo. And of course you have a situation where this, isn't it a heartbeat of the alto voice it is dying away gradually and finally extinguished. Maybe allow, as you may know, allow also just a little bit of and then getting, getting lost, losing yourself, Ando, in the last bar. 
something imperceptibly, nothing crude, nothing overdone, but just a little thing, or even 21, if you prefer. You know, this is not you, but the, the video got out of sync for a moment. Would you just try it one more time? We're just like, one more time. Same thing. Just... Yes. Hello? We lost the connection there for a little bit. Okay, yes, yeah. I'm... Hello? Yes, can you hear us? I, I also lost you for a bit, but now it seems like it's... Are we back? It's back. Yes. Okay. okay. Good. I, and I was just and I was just saying, Hannah, it's better. The last thing I heard, it's better like that than the ending, the that way. And and for me, it's it's just you know, so good job and so much. Thank you. So let's go, on, please. I think we're back. Yeah. Hello, my name is Nathaniel, and I'll be playing uh, number trouble with this yes with, with your pic with your picture so I'm let me just uh, leave on this device for a moment and I'm going to come right back if you can let me write in okay that sometimes will solve it so I'm going to right, okay right. so just watch for me to come back okay it's actually most likely the problem it's on our, our end yeah, yeah. You just three.
let's let's see let's let's um is this uh nathaniel can you can you play can you play just the first two bars just so i can see if i can have it in sync <laughs> I think I think this will be fine now. Um, you know, I, I'm 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 going to uh, just actually ask you to play a little play a little bit again because not only was it out of sync, but um, the sound is a, is 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 also um, actually sort of it's more it sounds clearer than uh, it's harder at any rate. Just play again so I can at least half of it so I can give a, a better assessment. Good. Um, what you can do, in my opinion, is more clearly distinguish the tidy, sharp articulation in the left hand, you're doing it, but could it be even neater, even tidier? Really quick fingertips, really quick, well articulated. Uh, let's try that first. Just the left hand. Could you play bar six again? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, fine, 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 fine. Yeah, I don't remember hearing that, but I heard it wrong note now. And then the right hand, more, you see, espressivo. Again, he says espressivo, so it really has to be, in this case, a kind of a, a mock seriousness. Uh, more legato and also more free. And I think when you get more, when you get to bar, bar 10, that f strange marking, you know, staccato under a slur. It's not really a 19th century portato. It, it could be. But this espressivo. Yeah, da, 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 da. Uh, let me try a bit. And I'm, I'm not sure, for, forgive me if the notes are wrong. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. When the right hand has staccato, please make sure it's just as perky as the left hand. I mean, sometimes it's just one note, but uh, bar 29 or 28. Sometimes I think what, you know, you, you, you don't, it's not, it's not clean, clear enough in the right hand when it changes to staccato. And then when the left hand plays alone, sometimes you rush. 
one example, maybe there's a couple, but uh, when the left hand has a rhythm, uh, 37. Right? It seemed, it seemed a bit, I mean, not to that extent, but it seemed a bit hurried. Make sure you absolutely stay in time. Good. And then at the very end, you didn't play it now, but you played it before. It has to be so soft and light. Make sure you only use finger. One and five, presumably, on the very last note. Don't also use the wrist, if you can watch my hands, because then even just the wrist will be too much. We, we really want... as light as possible while we're articulating. Just the last two bars or four bars. Except that I love it, except the less wrist you use, I don't even talk about arm, of course there's no arm here, but the less wrist, the more active the fingertips have to be. So make sure both fingers are actually, the tips are really grabbing the note. Ah, that's, you know, like just the, the, the cherry on top. You know, that's, that's just right. Good job. And, and I like your tempo and, and I like your character. So well done. Thank you, Nick. job uh, again this is a, a, a tricky one to, to manage and uh, tempo 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 is always the key is the first question is the last question I think your tempo choice is perfect I just want to say that uh, you're not playing 108 clearly uh, because again it's 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 as I recall it's not playable uh, at least not in not in a not in an intelligent intelligent or intelligible way so your tempo is somewhat under and and it's good. I mean, I think it's a it's a good tempo. It sounds presto. And, uh, you know, you've made a, a, a great choice. About your pedaling. This is so tricky to pedal because, frankly, the pedals are are, shall we say, generous, kind of generously and abundantly marked. And I commend you 
and completely agree with you that you're as I can as far as I can tell over Zoom, you are following quite closely his markings. This I think is appropriate and, and important. I would just say, can you experiment with slightly less deep pedal? Mm -hmm. So for example, that first three bars all on one pedal. Do you do that? Am I correct? I think you do you do that, more or less. Yeah. Sort of. Maybe that's not the best example. Maybe the but certainly you're 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 you you seem to be close with his pedal. But in short, follow his markings as closely as possible as far as the durations of the pedal, but consider going half pedal even even quarter pedal, depending on how the piano works and how long the bass sustains, so you don't lose things. Would you just try that? That's, of course, a tricky thing. Try it now and even try it a couple of times if you want to experiment or almost practice for us to see how this the pedal works on this particular piano. <laughs> How did that feel for you, Joanna? Um, it's fun. It's kind of a little Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing how little we use the pedal range in terms of the depth of the pedal in general. And, and in this music in particular, it's extremely important to have that light touch. And remember, uh, there's also a little bit the aspect of a, we can say, historical you know, performance practice. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. But I'm not because uh, the the pianos that Shostakovich was used to, the pianos in Russia in the Soviet Union at that time were mostly Bechsteins. Uh, the good pianos were Bechsteins, and those Bechstein really nothing like today's Bechsteins. Actually, much better, in my opinion. Uh, but but those Bechsteins were very light, uh, light in touch, and that explains some of the kind of really virtuoso writing that that can be done with a light action and light pedal. And I've played quite a few of those pianos. And so I, ha I have a maybe a better sense of how, you know, what he's thinking, partly influenced by the instruments he knows. So on the modern kind of war out, you know, equipped for war Steinways that we play, and the pedal is so big, and we have to really, I think, be, be careful. That just that little snippet that you tried now, I think is is very promising so that you're not going to play it dry. You're not going to play it uh, too clear because it's legato and it's slurred and it has these pedals, but we can have the best of both worlds. I think if you play this way, other than that, uh, technically, I mean, you're managing it. You like all of us, you can use a little more practice still. It's good if you're not recording it tomorrow, you still have a few more days, maybe, maybe a couple weeks. Uh, to just just to just to keep at it and to keep polishing it so that so that uh, it's as, as as clean as can be but already I think it's in a high level uh, last comment for you is just as you become even more comfortable with it could you try to define the dynamics even more clearly piano just looking at the beginning piano no crescendo for six bars then crescendo to forte and then quick diminuendo vanishing right and really light here very light and so forth so i think you're doing you're doing the dynamics but maybe not as as clearly or as convincingly uh, because you're of course you're worried about so to speak you know managing everything else but, and then even at the end, it's so hard with those jumps, but you know, with that triple forte, if that could just be, you know, go for it. If you miss, you miss, you know, but, but uh, I think that could be a little more wild uh, uh, in the end, but uh, wonderful job. And I think I'll, again, we'll see you in a few minutes for, for another one. So thank you.
Good. Uh, you have a smooth manner about your playing, and it, it suits suits this probably very well, I think. So that's a good match, you and this and this uh, C sharp minor prelude. Um, a couple of things. I, I, your legato is beautiful, and in the beginning, I, I think I think you're you're getting a good sound and a good legato. I am not crazy about. I think I saw you starting with the first finger. In other words, I should say with the thumb. That, that doesn't seem that you give, it will give you the best result. I mean, of course, it's, it's in one position, but thumb in the black key, thumb in the first note of a melody. Since it's easy and, and, and so easy technically, why not start with maybe maybe a two, two, three, one, for example, just to give you a beautiful singing sound right at the beginning. Uh, I'd like to say two more things and you can try them all together. The accompaniment is a bit loud. It's a bit too heavy. Partly it's the pedaling, which as I was just saying to Joanna, could be lighter. The pedal could be lighter. Do what he says, but not as deep. But so that's part of it. But the other part is that it's too much weight. So this, the bass is okay, but the thumb is such a heavy finger. And if you add any kind of a downward movement with wrist, or, well, you need a little pulsation, but not more. Otherwise, if you get any forearm involved, it will be too much. So we'd like to have... have a hairpin. Can you do more? Because you, you, you hold back, which is great, but then give more when he asks. So if we think about those things, the pedal and the lightness of the left hand and the better fingering in the right hand, and then that hairpin. Wonderful. Thank you. All of that is what I'm asking. You're already starting to do it. Then when the right hand has portato, portato, of course, is the dots we were just discussing, dots under a slur. I feel you don't really do it. You just sort of play, I don't know, you, you keep playing legato, just not as good a legato. In other words, on the wrist, right? If you can see my hand, a little, little bit of this pulsation. And I, I feel that there's such a beautiful color in it that you miss if you don't do it. So maybe try that. Good. Then we have the contrast with the portato and then the legato in the... Okay, and then uh, just another one or two things. Color, I think you could allow yourself to listen more acutely, more sensitively to, to the harmony and to the color changes that are implied. I mean, they're all over the place in this piece. Just for example, right after that. This. Right? I mean, it should just be maybe even after F natural. I suppose, right? Something, something obvious, but this flattened second degree of the scale, 
you need to respond. You need to react. You need to show it somehow. Maybe a little time, maybe just a, a shade of color. And then when the, and, and this ties in with my last point, I think it's my last point, when the writ, writ when writ Ardondo comes, what, he wants you to take time. It's really built in rubato. And I find that you were a little bit, a little cavalier. In other words, you a little perfunctory maybe with the Richard Dondo. Allow it to happen. There's beautiful colors there. So even after this one, that's not the moment yet. The moment is coming. Uh. Only here a tempo. And, on, and then later on this page, and then, you know, in, in 29, and again, so many of them in the next page. I don't know if you have the same pages, but um, Ritardando can breathe more, take more time, show more with the color. Okay, try this for us, please. Maybe from... not have a ritardando for two bars yes. yes it's too much in time it shouldn't be in tempo it should be free from here please sorry I'm, I'm not hearing I'm hearing it it just sounds in tempo can I try one more time only here it's in tempo only here Danica, that should be the minimum because somehow otherwise we're barely noticing these false relations and the minor and then changes to major you need to show i think these things more and then your trills are beautiful just make sure that we have the melody when when it comes in bar 45 when it comes the melody comes that note has to be clear other ones that you know really work well but that note that is a unison with the trill didn't come out I, I lost track I think we did of the of the melody and then again more time and more drama uh, after that there's a fermata stop don't hurry and this surprise right and again writ that more 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 free and more it's more more magic a little more obvious so that it's not missed okay uh, but uh, lots of gorgeous things and and um, I think if you can add that you know that 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 element it, uh, you know it'll really be terrific thank you so much
is very good. I like it very much. I like your tempo. Um, your 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 overall approach, I think, is. I mean, it's well learned, and it's just generally it's solid. T two things that come to mind. One, don't rush. Just make sure you're practicing with metronome. Make sure that you know the more nervous you are, you know the more poise you force yourself to have. Uh, because all of a sudden, you know, in a in an easy bar, because there's some nasty things here, but in an easy bar, relatively easy bar twelve, you took off. Now you finish this, and, and then you maybe you were relieved that you know a temporary lack of sixteenth notes, but you know you just so just make sure don't don't trip up on the uh, in on the easy stuff, so to speak. Uh, so just. That one thing is not to rush. The other thing is the overall physical approach is a little heavy. And what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing is that you're using too much arm, too much. And at the, right at the beginning, yes, it's accented for the first four notes. But first of all, only four notes. Then it's simply staccato. And to me, you need to play very much with the fingers, always. But in this case, of course, also staccato on the wrist. You're using the wrist, but you're also using, you can't see it, I realize very well, I'm going to push out my elbow, but you're using this whole forearm. So it comes out to something like this. I'm going to try to keep my elbow out. It's too much arm. And so consequently, the sound is just too heavy. So there's a way to play forte. And by the way, diminuendo right away. But uh, to play crisply and, and even to play forte, to play big, but, but not heavy. So maybe just try to give us a few bars for those two things. A really clear, calm rhythm in your excellent tempo and, and uh, wrist, not arm for staccato. Yes, yes, bravo, bravo. Yes, that's that's exactly the, the right approach. So I think this 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 will really help. And I really liked particularly when you got to the third bar to the piano. And you really are playing much more just fingers. We don't need anything except fingers there. So well done. One last thing at the end, five bars from the end, bar 30, amoroso. What does that mean? Sorry? Yeah, you know what? It's so hard to hear you through the mask. This this wretched pandemic makes even speaking hard. Loving? Well, uh, loving. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, th that's roughly it. Um, in in love maybe is better. You know, in love. So uh, you know the the feeling of being in love. And and I wonder if you can communicate that feeling. I mean, what a great marking, not just espressivo or something, but very specific. And I, I just thought you kind of ignored it. I mean, what an unexpected turn of events from B major to to B flat major. Obviously, it's completely the wrong place to be. So could you show that? Tardando at the end. Not, not, to, the retardando continues until the end. Okay, so put, pick a bar before Amoroso and, and play. Yeah, sure. One last request. Can you make a beautiful legato in the thumb 
I assume you're sliding your thumb. Can you really make that legato? Yeah, I would not hurry it. For musical reasons, we want to hear that suspension. We want to enjoy that. And then also technically we need to, if I get, if I lift my other fingers, I need to prepare this slide. So I almost want to take my time and slide in slow motion. So I don't bump the B or conversely, I don't, you know, miss it. And again, a kind of a half pedal, a third of a pedal where we get, we get that little we get the suspension and the tonic all baked in together into one kind of impressionist painting. Well done. Thank you. very much Florence I, I think uh, you've picked uh, one of the most tricky ones to pedal and I'm encouraged by what you're doing with the pedal but I think it can be done better and you can already guess what I'm going to say if you've been listening to the class so far I think particularly in your piece with this two bar pedal and so much staccato over the pedal or pedal uh, pedal under staccato 
you need to find a way to pedal lightly. Experiment. Let, let me try it now. Uh, let me see if I can find a way to just use a light pedal. I think that's a little more successful uh, in, 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 in I would want to practice it and, and fine tune it. But every piano is different. And it sounds to me like that room you're in is a, is a kind of a boomy and, and, a, and, a, and a, you know, a nice resonant acoustic, which is great. Uh, but for things like this, we have to be careful. We would almost pedal less if I'm right about the acoustic, you know, rather than in a dry acoustic, pedal a little lighter. The other thing is, and I, I might have, you might have seen that from what I just demonstrated. I, I wonder about your tempo. There's, a, of course, a lot to deal with here, but I wonder if it could be a little faster eventually. It doesn't need to be fast. Uh, but uh, again, just a basic test. If I don't know this piece, does that sound like an allegro to me? Even allegro non troppo. But uh, probably sounds like a allegretto. So I would love just a little more. And of course, his marking is again, you know, un <laughs> I say that with the utmost, uh, you know, respect and love, but it's kind of unreasonably fast. It certainly doesn't sound, his marking is. Something like that. It, it doesn't feel or sound like a Legro non troppo. So we don't have to worry about that. But if you could, whether now or just as you practice, get it a little bit more moving would be great. Oh, I had a question. Why did you begin with the right hand here instead of crossed over? But at the, I just mean the very beginning, there's nothing for the right hand to do except get ready to play down here, right? Uh, I, I'm so sorry, this is, no, uh, just say it slowly and loudly. Uh, I just felt uncomfortable having my arms crossed over. Oh, I got uncomfortable. Yeah, well, I think, Ultimately, I think that sh would be more comfortable than, well, I just felt you had to scramble. You started here, you almost faked yourself out. You know, you had the right hand here, and you said, oh goodness, I have to run, you know, rush down there and make that. So I think you're better off if you're at least, at least above the left hand, even if you're not all the way down. But there's nothing wrong with starting in, in, in position or close to position. I think it'll get you off on the, on the right foot in my opinion. Okay, and, and yeah, good. So that's the idea. And Danica, the other thing I would say is finger articulation. Again, this is all a little comp <laughs> a little bit tricky to capture because of conflicting information is coming at once. He says legato in the left hand. He says pedal, but then the right hand is staccato. Now, it doesn't have to be the world's sharpest, most biting staccato, by no means. But I wonder if your version is a little too fluffy meaning the character of the right hand a little a little more precision even though it's we're going to lose some of that because of the pedal just just try again a couple bars <laughs> think that's so you're, you're 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 having all these disparate elements come together in a way that actually makes sense so you just have to work a little harder for it in this prelude than maybe in some other ones so um but if you can get the legato in the left hand if you can get the pedal half pedal and still get the staccato feeling 
in the right hand and the lightness of staccato that will really be super and a little bit more moving so good job and good luck thank you appropriately gloomy and dreary uh, and I think you're able to capture the that atmosphere uh, already very well be careful with rhythms sometimes you're just uh, either misreading or or uh, honestly I can't tell I'm not sure maybe sometimes misreading maybe sometimes rushing uh, maybe sometimes just impatient but the sort of the result is sometimes just not the right rhythm. For example, bar 20, 21, 22. We need two beats of nothing happen. I mean, just the tremolo. That third beat, right? On the third beat, that seemed early, and the 5 4 bar that follows seemed also seemed rushed. Yeah, so, okay. And then what about uh, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31? 31, can you play that bar again or start at the bar before? Okay, okay, that's better. But the tr even the tremolando begins, when should the tremolando begin in the left hand? What beat? 
It should begin in the second beat, clearly marked by the quarter rest. We're talking about bar 30, if people are following. But you are playing it immediately on the second eighth note. You're playing... like that so just a little need, needs a little bit of a uh, kind of a mm, rhythmic a rhythmic you know hygiene to just kind of clean a couple of things up okay this is, so those are relatively minor details but of course rhythm is never never minor by definition uh could uh, i'd like to suggest something can you play bar 15 14 15 just for a moment Well, you, we didn't, you didn't get very far. That's fine. I think we get the picture. Is this your tempo as I take it? Yes, something. I'm just trying to portray, you know, copy back what you're... Okay. Why don't you play that, take that tempo in your mind, have that in your mind, and begin in that tempo? Because I think you began, in my view, it was too slow. It was a bit disjointed. It didn't really, adagio, yes, and adagio profondo, but it has to somehow still have, still make a phrase. So beginning. Of all the bar, uh, of all the bars of this prelude, maybe bar four is you know you play this so well, but bar four is not so successful because you're you're I think you're slowing down even more from your what I perceive as a tempo that's on the, really on the verge of being too slow, and then you slow down and you play in six, and and what that bar really needs is direction, not nothing exaggerated, but. and two and three not by no means in six yeah if you think more legato and if you think less strict you know it needs to be it's it's a melody it needs to be and there's no rhythm so right there's no accompaniment so it can be freer it's a little too too it's too beaty if you know that expression you know, and definitely not six beats. So give it a little, almost a little rubato. Good. Okay. Very nice. Okay. And then um, the, the, the one other thing I, I'd like to say is I, I like what you're trying to do with these very heavy right hand accents and and you're you're really trying to render that especially at 26 27 28 but i think you need more arm and it's very rare i'll advise more arm in any music but you know sometimes you know we do have god did give us arms and 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 and, and there's a good chance to use them because it's not a fair battle right you have the trombones and tuba this huge bass and then the puny little right hand. So if you could, if you can see my hand, so, so I keep the wrist very free, very flexible, and I use a lot of, a lot of wrist. Each one, the wrist goes down, but not just the wrist. I also here apply my arm, my forearm.
So the sound is simultaneously very heavy, but but also very free. It's not forced, it's not stiff, it has a chance to ring. You want to just try that very free, free and heavy, you know, heavy in the arm. And you could try, you know, you could try, I'm playing right now, uh, you know, I'm playing three, two, one. I'm playing three fingers in each note. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't, it's just that, but you know, I'm using one, two, three. Actually, you know, some, you know, more or less on each one. Yes, yeah, just, but make, as soon as you stiffen the wrist, the sound gets stiff and the sound gets a little bit ugly. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can play, if you can play, your shoulder isn't the problem. The problem is your wrist is a bit stiff. So, and I mean, it's not a problem, but it's just something that you can work on. But if you, Again, if you watch my wrist. It's just it's just free and that's what you need. Yeah, to me, I mean that's encouraging what you're doing because the sound is bigger and it's also a better sound. Better meaning it's, you know, warmer for lack of a better, right? It, should, it shouldn't be accents, but it shouldn't be aggressive or nasty, right? I mean, we still want a good, good sound. And that's hard to do when it's one finger. Chords, it's easier to do. So now, by the way, whether you use that fingering or you just use a conventional, you know, whatever fingering fits the scale, it's fine. I mean, you can, or you can use all thumbs. You can do different things. So the tempo allows you to just do what works for you. Well, enjoy it. What an amazing, amazing prelude this, this is. And, uh, and uh, just keep going in the direction you are. And, and the more you can depress people with this one, the better. So. <laughs> I just uh, I feel like I'm just rushing, rushing, rushing through, and get and and spending so little time with everyone, and yet I'm also cognizant that we're a little behind schedule. So I I I don't know. Uh, yeah, six more venues. Yeah, I mean. Even uh, do you have comments or discussion? Are we allowed to go over time, or we must stop at six thirty or eight thirty? Let's just, I think let's do our best. I don't know. I, I can't, of course, we're skipping some pieces, but I, I suppose it just feels, let's just, I'll do my best to, to be as quick okay. with each person. Okay. Thank you for, for your patience.
much. Um, sorry, de, de, where is the accent? De Bossier? Um, de Bossier. Okay. Um, it's a good approach and uh, it's uh, focused and, uh, you know, your point of view is clear. I would say that uh, the tempo, we have to talk about the tempo because, uh, again, metronome mark aside, uh, Andantino. Now, we don't have time for this, but I guess that's just a 20 second digression. Andantino in the olden times, in classical time for Mozart and for Beethoven and, and uh, uh, in those days was slower. And we know this from Hummel and from Kvantz, it's slower than Andante. Uh, as we move into our day, Andantino is a little faster than Andante for most composers, uh, which anyway, that's the way it is, including Shostakovich. So faster than Andante, but not as fast as Allegretto. And to me, yours sounds, it doesn't sound Andantino, it sounds Allegretto or even, even possibly Allegro, Allegro non troppo. So again, don't worry about the metronome, but do worry about the feeling of Andantino. This little toy march for me, something like that. Okay, think about it. Um, also, at the end, the fanfare gets lost, right? The drum roll. It's so If you have to rush that, the repeated notes don't come out. It's a little, it's a little hectic. By the way, at the end, are you following the printed fingering? Not fingering, but hand distribution. The right hand plays the last two notes you cross over, yes? Can you play the last two bars? Um, and also you have a wrong note in the last bar, but let's play, just play them first. Uh, just play the last two bars, please. Yeah, I guess I don't understand what happens at the last downbeat. That should be played with two hands on the same note. And then the last two notes should be played with the left hand only. Of course, and it's more, it's just, it's, cor it's correct that way, obviously, but it's also more stylish, it's more elegant, it's more witty, you know, you could say almost, you know, more funny than, than to put the right hand there. Okay, good. So the main thing would be to just find, find something that sounds Andantino. Very good, thank you.
love your tempo. Per, to me, that's a that's just about a perfect tempo. Could be one notch quicker, maybe, but that's that's it. I mean, a, a legretto, good. Um, and it's well learned, and all this, and you've, you're playing that well, and that horrible scale at the end somehow comes out cleanly, and so good job, good job. I would just say, can you play with this same intensity? Uh, he says furioso. He says mercato, but he doesn't put accents. And he most importantly doesn't put fortissimo. And then in general, an allegretto, even though that's a tempo indication, but almost by definition, you know, is not a heavy kind of movement. Allegrettos, right? They tend to be a kind of a lighter texture. So here, <clears throat> could you play very articulate, very mar marcato, but not too much arm? And only forte, not fortissimo. Bright, bright and big, but not heavy. Yeah, I mean, even the octaves, I find that your left hand, you're really using too much arm. You don't need it. And the balance is a little out of whack with the right hand. Too, too much. Too heavy. I'm exaggerating, but just to make the point. Yeah, and technically, that's better. One, one more suggestion. Technically, if you were not I mean, physically, practically, if you were not jumping so far away from the key, as I think you're doing, it would be easier to control. You're, you're, you're too far, and then you're wasting too much effort. So, can you see that? Just, I don't know, one inch above the keys, roughly. Plenty of power. You don't need more. Okay, uh, but uh, yeah, really, really good job. Really good. And uh, uh, what a contrast with your other prelude. Couldn't be more, more different. So Great. thank you, Danica. Tricky prelude, well played. Uh, thank you, Joanna. Tempo, 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 tempo. Uh, there is a, a kind of a corollary to the uh, uh, rule to what I was talking about with Shostakovich's metronomes, which is never play faster than his marking. Um, I think almost everything slower or somewhat slower, but never faster. I actually think you're playing faster. Um, 
you can check it later or somebody can check it. But to me, that's 52 for the bar. You're actually above that. And I would recommend in any case to be somewhat under. For me, 46 maybe. Because again, Allegretto, I'm not sensing Allegretto. I'm just sensing like a fast 5-4 piece. And it seemed a little, you know, don't take this the wrong way because you're playing it so well, but it seemed a little hectic. Um, what is your tempo? I'm trying to remember, but... And then a little rushing sometimes. Just a little bit. Maybe I'm playing too fast. I don't mean to. But, but, but I wonder if it can be really steady. <laughs> and part of that is not too fast. And part of that is allegretto, poco moderato. So even slower than allegretto. Um, let me just try. Take a look steady, but also take a little time for these accents. Something like that. In other words, show show some of these characteristic gestures a little bit more. Allow yourself to show them rather than just okay. Just maybe try it if you would. neighborhood would be a, a much more advantageous tempo advantageous for the music to in my view to come across and then it would allow you also things like here in bar 11 staccato which isn't coming out was better now it's hard you know the faster you play the harder it is to play staccato obviously we kind of cheat it's not really it's neither fish nor fowl Da, 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 and then super legato, gluey, chromatic, uh, uh, acrid kind of a uh, texture or or color. Uh, I think all of that will be, will, and then things like um, you know, we have to make the crescendo and then diminuendo, crescendo and diminuendo. a little allegretto poco moderato the most important uh clue from the composer if it's bach or mozart or beethoven or shostakovich is the tempo is the tempo word or tempo words that's the most important clue you know in almost every piece of music about what the interpretation should be like it may not be much but it's 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 not nothing and uh so make Whatever you do, make this sound allegretto poco moderato. You know, whatever that means to you, I guess. But allegretto poco moderato. Okay, so otherwise, you know, I mean, extremely, you know, extremely well done. So, good, we'll go on, thank you.
Andre, uh, I really like your sense of rubato and an appropriate freedom that you bring to this very special prelude. And also the your ear for color. So I'm really, some of the things we've touched on with some of the other preludes, um, you're doing them, you're showing the, uh, for example, for example, Barth, just to give a concrete example, 30. I loved to hear the B, B natural and then the B flat, uh, this bar. And then you played. So simple, but it has, it. something must change. You must notice that and, and you do that. And that makes the whole experience really meaningful. So really, really good job in, in all those respects. Uh, so also your tempo is generally speaking, just about for me, you know, you nailed it, so to speak. It's just, it's, it's, it's very good. Maybe it's almost too quick. I mean, nothing is worse than an adagio that's too slow and, and just falls apart. But almost, I thought, sometimes it seems a little, almost a little casual, where that's a dividing line between adagio and andante, right? Andante can, can be casual and feel. Andante is a walking tempo. By definition, you know, you walk, you're walking, that's not that serious an activity. Right, but but adagio is more more serious, and sometimes it just feels a little too quick. A hair, just a hair. So that's 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 just um, nibbling kind of at the, at the edges. But make sure it always feels like an adagio. I wanted to just mention uh, two spots: one at the beginning, one at the end. Look at bar two and bar three and bar four. In other words, look at the beginning. Does he give us much information on how how to play this? No, I mean he says piano and he gives a slur. I mean that's already something, but there's it's hard to tell what the character is. It's just just notes and 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 a dynamic and a slur. Sometimes we can tell the character from looking elsewhere in the score. And what I'm getting at is if you look further at bar ten, or actually upbeat to 10, you have Espressivo, which by the way, you played well. But if we take that as a starting point, if we take that as a starting point in terms of color, then maybe that tells us that the beginning is more simple and it's not not espressivo. I don't know if I said that clearly, but in other words, just simple. Something like this. You know, not too hot, you know, yet. And then it really changes. Okay, you know, I guess we don't have time to have you try it, which is really not right. But just to try to keep me things moving, you can try it on your own. And I know you understand what I'm saying. And one last point at the end, I missed this outburst of emotion, maybe of grief or whatever you think it is in bar 41. You didn't do much. And if I could just suggest something like this for... 39. <laughs> Really, forte and espressivo, and real, so you really have to kind of grab it. Of course, very warm and beautiful sound, but 
but make sure that gesture is a memorable one in this in this not only in this prelude but in the whole set good I, I, you're really on the right track thank you Andre well done strong performance and I think Davis um, the overall approach is, is I like it I like the legato I like the uh, I like your tempo I think that sounds moderato uh, the, the only thing really of note is that you'll notice that the whole that he starts piano no dynamics and actually no dynamics forever. Only at 20 does a crescendo begin, resulting in that climactic. And it seemed to me that you did too much too soon, specifically 15, 16, you know, 14, 15, 16. Uh, yes, there's an espressivo in the bass, that's important, but overall, that sounded like you were making a crescendo, quite a big one actually. I would be much more discreet and, and keep it all under wraps and you have the recap, little recap at 18, so to speak, and only then it builds up and of course then 24 is the big climax. Um, and this, the other small point, at the end he says morendo. So morendo, similar to smorzando similar to perdendosi, dying away, dying, losing oneself, getting lost, uh, fading away. To me, that's sound. In other words, decrescendo. And also, ritornando. Some degree of it. To me, you can do more decrescendo, and you certainly can do a little more slowing down i mean if 
just the last bar, but this seemed to me very much in tempo, the last two bars. You know, too strict. No need to be so strict. I'm not talking about anything big, just but a little bit to wind it down and, and disappear would be good. Okay, again, I guess we shouldn't really try it, but, but you understand what I mean? And the overall picture is already strong. So just these saving the crescendo and then a better ending, I think will, uh, will serve you well. Thank you, Davis. Thank you, Araman, for another uh, spirited performance and, a, and a, a good way to finish off our, our, our evening. Um, a couple of suggestions. First of all, the, the main thing I would like to tell you about this one is that you are playing in four, and I guess it's marked in four, but do you know what kind of a dance or what kind of a form a dance? What kind of a dance this is supposed to be? Um, yeah, I think you said it, gavot. Um, <laughs> Gav I, no, I mean, I, I think I think you already know that. So if it's a gavot, it has to be in two. And to me, this is young Shostakovich I, just tossing off. He tossed these off, you know, in a, in a matter of weeks. Very quickly wrote them. I, I can't imagine that it's anything other than just a not... You know, kind of a mismarking. I, I, I don't know if that, but in other words, it has to be in two. A gavotte has to be in two, and uh, so rat. And yours is too much, too much every beat. So if you agree with me, if you, if if I mean, most importantly, if that's what Shostakovich wants, if we think that's what he wants, then. And so forth. 
I think we can see that in all the rhythms in the left hand. Jump, 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 jump. You know, it's not in four, it's in two. So that's the main thing. Is just to get that lightness. And what's the difference between two and four? Practically, how do we make it? If you think about it, it's the lightness of the second beat and of the fourth beat. As opposed to more or less equal the four beats. Okay, this is, I think, so we're almost done and everybody thank you for your patience. And if you could just, just try this, this is really important to see if we can get that feeling. And again, tempo, maybe you're on the, don't hurry, don't hurry. It's a, it has to be so, so characteristic. right it's so much better it's so much better already and that's the direction you should go uh, take uh, take a little time if you can i know you're also busy and you, your classes and homework and in addition to this but uh, look through the french suites of bach and, and 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 just play a couple of those gavots just for yourself sight read them you probably have already played some of them but just to remind yourself of the of the gracefulness and the just what that feeling should be. And then really it applies here, I think, except that it's tongue in cheek and the harmonies are funky, but, but it's this, the, the feeling is the same. This, uh, all of this stuff really well handled, well done. I would just say even lighter pedal. It's a little bit getting muddy, which is inevitable because of his marking, but if the pedal could be half pedal, that would really help uh, get the best of both worlds. And finally, at the end, uh, I just want to make sure you know, I think it's, it's a, I don't think it's a misprint. I think it's an E natural. And then the E flat here. Yeah. Yeah. Many, many, many people play E flat, but I think, uh, but many people play natural, and I think, I think E flat. You know, I just want to say, don't assume. I think people are either misreading, uh, including famous, uh, you know, artists. That's not the, you know, you still have to read it. And so either misreading or uh, just assuming, oh, it must be wrong. But if, if this piece teaches us anything, the whole set is how many clashes there are, how many unpredictable harmonies. And, and the evidence is that he missed a natural sign twice in the right hand and then, in the, and then also in the left hand. You, it's missing, uh, excuse me, a flat. There should be a flat in the right hand and in the left hand. So it's not one mistake, it's two mistakes, supposedly. To me, to me, I would, I would, on the evidence, I would prefer uh, the E natural. I don't want to assume there's two mistakes there, and I think it's more interesting. So anyway, the world won't end if you play E flat, and and you're certainly entitled to that opinion. And I, I don't know, but to me, E natural is correct. Uh, good, and I love the way you end with a, with panache and with good character. So. So thank you, and I'd like to just also, we'll give you a, a, a hand, but before that, I just want to thank everybody, Yeva, of course, for being the inspiration behind this project, and, and uh, what a wonderful artist she is, and you're all lucky to have her at Duke, as I'm sure you know, uh, and Yeva, thank you for organizing this, and for preparing everybody so well, and I'm so impressed with, I'm so impressed with the, the level, and uh, most importantly, the, the attitude and the approach that you're all bringing, uh, everybody's really working hard and, and playing with honesty and, and wanting to, uh, to, 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 to make something out of it. So uh, I'm so happy for all of you and uh, happy to have joined you and thank you for letting me go over. I tried to go as quickly as possible, but it's just, uh, it's, 
it's it's hard with so many people and so much great material to get into. So bravo Aram and bravo everybody and bravo Yeva. <laughs> Super, super. Thank Lovely you. to see. Thank you for in inspiring us for the, all the insights and you know we will have an expert here and expert eye and also sort of inviting us to think about really important things for us today. We have a recording party for them. And I think we have things for you now. Well, and I look forward to hearing the final result. So yeah. I'm sure Yeva will share with me the recording. So keep working and good luck and enjoy and bring out all these great characters as you're already doing. So well done, everybody. Thank you. I'm inspired too. <laughs> this is great. So,